we got a new, I should start off this time. Dual commentary again with Moltrap, so this is going to be the third dual commentary. This is going to be game two between Ratatata TNG, or just RTG, as I like to call him. Upper right hand corner, he's going to be the yellow teller, and bottom left hand corner, we have DM White as the white Protoss, which I always appreciate colors uh, matching meta names. And this is going to be on Eclipse. And yeah, should be a good match. So no longer weird map, Eclipse. I think this is a standard, I think this is still in the ladder pool, standard ladder map. But it was just, I won't I won't go into the rant I was just getting into, uh, especially in the middle of BSL. But uh, I, uh, I, had to, I casted a game a few months ago that was uh, July Zerg versus NC Yellow. And July Zerg was the color yellow in the game. Like he was the yellow Zerg. And so I had to be like, yellow, who is the player yellow, not the color yellow. Is it was, it was really bad. More so color I, commentary. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm on board with, uh, with, with that as well. And uh, RTG is uh, yellow, but he has been playing fearlessly in the couple games that we've, I've seen from him recently. So uh, excited to see where this goes in this uh, TVP matchup. Looks like, again, RTG not blocking the front door, which, odd play. So Playdeep was kind of out to a corner, and still no barracks down either. So there's the barracks in the corner, kind of distanced here. So he's going to have to perform some Miracle Marine Micro if there was aggression, but I think we might see a 12 Nexus opposite corner, because first of all, no Probe Scout, additionally, no Gateway, and there is a save to 400 Minerals. And this is a gutsy move on a two-player map. Wow. Yeah, I, I do think that on this map, actually, um, that not well in the expansion is in a way safer because the ramp is so tiny on this map that you can just put a couple SCVs there and crowd your Marines behind it, and it's pretty safe, I think. So um, not too surprising to see. It's almost like a safer play to do this. But yeah, going for the very fast Nexus play here. Now, the question is, is RTG going to try and punish this is he going to spot this nexus which his scv is on the way so it looks like he's going to scout it kind of in time to make a response here he's going to see the nexus basically when the first gateway is finishing are we going to see a snap decision for him to send some marines and scvs and try to punish this or is he going to say okay well i got to try and play catch up build a command center of his own um we're going to find out just very very soon what his re reaction is going to be so i think he also yeah moved that scv in kind of an odd scouting pattern because it, it was such a late probe scout that he's like okay i think i am going up against some cheese so he wanted to kind of move around the corner and now seeing the 12 nexus flash has developed a whole lot of counters to this sort of thing and i'm almost wondering if we're going to see one of those time you put you see a factory down we do see scv only a single scv in gas which suggests we're going to see a nexus follow-up uh, to this I'm not sure I like that um, mostly because when you're getting that nexus a little bit later as a follow-up I just feel like you're just throwing that economic advantage to the Protoss player rather than going again there's just yeah there's a lot of build orders these days to kind of punish this yeah he's going to go defensive and on top of everything else plop, plopping down a bunker which is another grouping of minerals that is going to slow that command center down even further there is a zealot on the front door just in case those marines decided to get aggressive the cybernetic score about halfway finished but as a result, I feel like White is going to have a significant advantage here in the mid-game. Yeah, this is a little bit puzzling that he's gone for, for that build. In the bunker as well is like, he just scouted and he saw that his opponent had zero attack units. And he's like, I need a bunker! A um, little bit of an overreaction there. I think, though, like you said, he wants to just play it. They play a macro game here. He's going to just play, play catch up and get his own command center. Uh, are we still on online? Yeah, it sounded like your mic switched. I heard a... Oh, crap. I'll let you fix your mic while I continue to talk. We did, hopefully there's better... That? That's better. Hopefully you have a better audio balance here. Two Dragoons uh, off two gateways being produced. A single Vulture moving out. It doesn't have any support tech, and it is going to be greeted by those Dragoons. Oh, sorry. First Vulture making your way there. Does get a single probe kill. Might get two probe kills, but even then, producing out of two Nexus, um, delaying a little bit of mining... So every little bit helps. The Dragoons should be there shortly, though, uh, to follow this up. Maybe if they can get a Zealot kill, that'll... I mean, every little bit counts here, right? But now, if the Zealots can just trade and make sure they deny information, good. Second Dragoon blocking. Vulture down. Uh, machine Shop is up. A second factory being built. The Command Center not even finished, though. And as long as White stays on top of his macro and builds... Continues to build, you know, at twice the probe rate, he's still, yeah, going to be in a 
have a sizable advantage. I like this play, though, of moving that vulture up to the 9 o'clock, at least to try to deny any sort of quick third take. Very well played by White, I gotta say. His micro in that situation was very good. It was a little bit um, out uh, maneuvered. There was a potential to be out maneuvered since he only had those zealots to start off with. He controlled the zealots fairly well, and when the dragoons came in there, they were able to micro very well as well. Um, like you said, blocking the ramp was very, very crucial there. So it was a, an interesting move by RTG. Now, he did only lose one vulture, and he killed a few probes, so it was a good trade overall, but now he's got to be worried about this counter push here um, from White. He does have a siege tank in play, but I don't believe he has siege... Uh, no, he does not have siege tank. tank. Doesn't have yeah, mines yet, either. A little bit worried here. He might need to pull some SCVs to actually help defend this, and he is going to pull a few SCVs to try and repair the bunker. The tanks and the vultures firing away at that zealots in the front line, but the marines have been completely exposed, and he's actually going to skip the marines and go after the tank. Mines have been planted down. There's a potential. Oh, he hits the dragoons, but also takes out a few of his SCVs at the same time with the mine drag here, and it looks like the mines are going to keep this from going any farther because there's no detection for white, but he has kind of breached the front door here and done some significant damage, taking out the first tank taking out the marines taking out several scvs for a loss of one dragoon and two zealots is a good trade if you ask me yeah and also these dragoons are starting to encroach a little bit this is just vultures being produced this is basically survival mode just get them out the mines down i'm wondering if a zealot's actually going to make its way that direction looks like he's just continuing to produce dragoons he's going to get observers and just try to play contain from there front door seal from white uh although there is a little bit of gap where that single wayward vulture might be able to sneak through still Siege tech still being upgraded. A first tank is now out, and a Goliath being produced uh, to follow this up. White in a lot of trouble here. Is yeah, he's gonna GG right there actually. <laughs> Wait, White GG? Yeah, White GG. Why did White GG? I'm not sure. I think it might have been a GG from well, should have been a GG from TNG. White was the first one that GG. Kind of an unusual play. I'm not play. sure why, because he was on two bases, getting his robotics up. Yeah, that's... He had, I'm confused. We're going to... Yeah, we'll rewind. Take a look at this. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. I mean, pause it right here before the game ends. And, uh... So he's got Dragoons here at the Natural. Still two factories up here. He's mostly breached the Natural expansion. Yeah, that, that would be unusual if it was a GG. Third gateway. Why? Observatory yeah. out. He's got his observatory. He's got more dragoons going across the map. He just took like a tiny amount of damage from one tank, and he GG'd. Like, uh, even in count? Yeah, weird. Because I was expecting. You're right. That's not a T. That's not an there, RTG DG. Even supply, even worker count, um, even map advantage. Like. White even had more map control, I would say. Yeah, White definitely has more map control. I don't know what's going on here. By that. Maybe um, his Uber Eats got to the door and he's like, well, I need to go I need to go pick it up and eat my sandwich. And um, I don't want to bother playing StarCraft because I'm hungry. A little bit of a late second assimilator, but otherwise, yeah, White is in a great position here, in my opinion. I'll have to ask him. Really quick, I'm going to... I guess I'll stop the recording here. We, GG? yeah, we'll call GG right there. If that is the case, uh, yeah, congratulations to RTG. Thanks for listening.